Sure. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, good evening to all. Uh, welcome to sixth day continuous professional development program on digital food and agri business, uh, sponsored by the Atal AICT, organized by the Indian Institute of Plantation Management. And today we have our research person, Pradeep Sir. Sir, hi, sir. Good evening. Hi, sir. hi, hi. Good evening. Good evening to all. I would like to call upon our student coordinator. Could you just brief about our resource person? Sure, sir. So. A very pleasant good evening to the respected resource person, coordinators of the program and our beloved participants. This is Jennifer from Indian Institute of Plantation Management, feeling privileged to introduce our respected speaker of the session, Mr. Pradeep Bison sir. Pradeep Bison sir is a technical director, Geospital at Satsure Analytics India Private Limited. Sir has completed his MTech in Remote Sensing and GIS from Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, Dehradun. Sir is having professional experience in GIS, remote sensing, satellite image processing, and agriculture. Sir has completed a project network, a project of network analysis and site suitability using GIS fatal analysis for hydropower power station. Sir is experienced in handling GIS-based software and tools like ArcGIS, QGIS, Spatel Analytics, and 3D Analyst. Analytics, etc. Et Sir has worked in several GIS mapping and analysis projects for urban development. Sir is also experienced in image classification for land use and land cover mapping and hyperspectral. Sir possesses an extensive experience of remote sensing and GIS in agriculture applications like crop acreage estimation, drought assessment, and crop area progression. So now I invite Mr. Pradeep Bison, sir, to take forward the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank the session you. is now session, so over to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, shall I? Yeah, Jennifer, you can stop sharing the screen. Okay, sir. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Pradeep, yeah. sir, uh, you can take up to 7 to 7.50, sir. Uh, you can, if you want, some 10 minutes question answer session. One more session, they have 8 to 9. Then they have test also, MCQ test today. So okay, okay. Uh, around uh, 7.50, sir. Around 7.50. Yeah, yes. uh, within a uh, time, I can yes, yes. manage it. No problem. No? So, okay. So, just give me one sec. Yes, we can see your screen, sir. Yeah, you can see my screen. Uh, yeah. yeah, so Make it today, screen, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just give me one sec. Yeah. Yes, now, my see. screen is visible. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, good evening to everyone. So, uh, today I am delivering a lecture on a prediction the AIML, uh, AIML based weather, uh, soil health, agronomy, demand forecasting, crop planning. So, these are the part of the agriculture stack side. So, basically, in uh, uh, within a precision agriculture side nowadays uh, people are putting a lot of efforts you know, in, uh, to automate the agriculture things uh, especially in a precision uh, farming side as well as the precision agriculture side and uh, not only the farming side as well as the financial institutions banking banking sectors insurance or insurance sector even though the government also making a policies on a basis of the insights, what the insights uh, we are generating through the remote sensing. So what is the beauty of the remote sensing? That part I want to explain before I start the lecture. So through remote sensing, for example, let's say if I want to cover a one particular district and I want to do the what kind of the crop is available on the particular agriculture area, what kind of the farming is going on, what is the acreage, how much area is available under the particular crop, what is the yield of that particular crop. So if we want to run uh, this particular activity uh, through, uh, you know, the, the uh, human side, maybe it will take a one or two months time to cover that area and huge human force is required. Or uh, not only the human force, skill in human force is required to cover that particular part. But through remote sensing, what 
we can do we can cover the whole district within a uh, one or two person only can cover the whole district and they can generate the insights on a defined interval defined interval in the sense every five to six days interval we are getting a satellite data we have to process it and then we can generate the insights every six days interval so we can map the whole area what kind of the crop is available let's say in a one particular district there were three or four different crops are available those all three four crops we can map it how much area is available how much yield can come so the forecast part also we can map it as well as if there were some kind of the disease or any kind of the stress condition will form in that particular area those kind of the things also we can map it or we can generate the insights so within a particular district we can segregate the pockets where these kind of the conditions are forming so this is the the very big advantage we can say and we can take a, a kind of the decision what kind of the the treatment or the 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 uh, what kind of the 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 treatment or we can say the what kind of the pesticide fertilizers we have to put it on that particular area to control this particular part so now i'm talking about the sector so basically uh, sector is a uh, globally available we are available in uh, uh, india australia us and uk basically but or, uh, or whatever the data processing everything all kind of the insights we are generating or we are running from a bangalore itself only so in the under the set sure we have a three different kind of the the verticals one is the agriculture side so we have a dedicated uh, one product we can say the set sure sage within a set sure sage basically we are uh, we're calculating or we are estimating the farm farm credit risk assessment so farm credit risk assessment is like uh, how we are generating the credit score right same kind of the score you can get it at a farm level so those kind of the insights we are uh, providing to bankers as well as the uh, institutions and the government bodies so they on a basis of that they can take a decision if they want to target a very small area second is the infrastructure side so road building and other critical infrastructures so what kind of the constructions are going on, going on what is the footprint how much area is there what kind of the damage is there if, if, if there is the 100 kilometer stretch highways there so where is the damage so those kind of the detection also we are doing through the satellite data and uh, for that we have we made our uh, you know or uh, within our company we made a lot of ai ml based algo i will show you in a use case site so uh, you guys will understand and third is the climate change side. So here we are managing the drought and flood monitoring, prediction, agroforestry, remote sensing side, and the climate hazard, all kind of the, the environmental side effect and all we are mapping in a climate change side. Now, this uh, we what we saw here, the broad level, the three verticals, again, we segregated the three products so here the uh, agriculture side you can see the sexual stage so in a sexual stage basically we are we dis uh, disperse the loan more than two million farmers within uh, india because the india has a very ha very huge heterogeneity here the land holding capacity is also very small so average loan land holding capacity is 0 0.5 acre so it's very difficult uh, with this kind of the heterogeneity if we want to map and we want to provide a one kind of the score and on a basis of that score if the bankers as well as the government institutions if they want to take uh, any kind of the decision so for that we made uh, this particular product set sources uh, another one is the agriculture side we have the the sector is part of there we can uh, get a full stake of the the products so ready product we can say i will show you uh, at the end the the website anyone can go there 
they can register and uh, they can use that products easily. And third one is the infrastructure side. So here we have a Setsure Skies product. Here we providing a infrastructure solutions to, uh, you know, uh, we up to now we provided Adi, Bila, Adani and the uh, AIA, so Airport Authority of India. So we provided a solutions to, so these big, big institutions. So basically they want to, to manage their um, uh, kind of the activity as well as they want a quick solution because if they want to do the survey on a whole street, let's say they want to put a high tension line. For that, let's say if they want to complete a 900 kilometer survey, it is going to take a lot of time and because the visibility is very less. One person can see up to two kilometer, but in a satellite data, you can see up to 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers. So what kind of the features are available? Which one is the physical route? Those kind of the selection and we can do very easily through remote sensing of the satellite data. Now I'm giving a, a small introduction. What is the remote sensing basically? So when we are collecting the information of uh, about any object without being direct physical contact with that. So let's say if you have a camera, normal camera, if from a normal camera, when we are taking a picture, that time we are not touching that object, but we can understand, okay, this is the car or some other object. So same thing, basically in a satellite also, we, we are going to get the same kind of the things. So there were a different kind of the bands you are going to get. I will show you in a next slide. So here we can see different kind of the sensors and the sensors capacity and the capability also is uh, different. So let's say if you can see on a 36 kilometer, 36,000 kilometer height, there were a geosynchronized satellites you we are we can get it so basically they are people are using for the remote sensing as well as the communication also but the polar side you can get a range near about up to 900 kilometer here so all kind of the polar satellites we can get so the repetitivity and the coverage may be the minimum but the 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 feature what we want to capture through polar satellite, it is very easy to capture and, uh, and uh, to analyze those kind of the images, it is also very easy. Now, the types of satellites, what kind of the satellites if we are talking about, so let's say there were a communication satellites, basically they are using part the broadcast television and all. Another one is the weather satellites is also available. Those are providing the temperature, how much rainfall is there, precipitation, pollution, dew points, so other kind of the parameters they are providing. Then the navigation satellites. So let's say we are using a GPS, right? So in a GPS side, if you want to 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 use the GPS, then definitely we want a, a navigational satellite is required. So and then fourth one is the Earth observation satellite. Within a Earth observation satellite, again there were two types of satellite will come. One is the uh, geosynchronous, another one is the polar one. So here basically uh, there were a very big big cameras are putting in uh, those uh, earth observation satellites and they are, uh, you know, they are taking the pictures uh, continue in a continuous way. So basically the whole, uh, if any company or any institution, institution, if they are, they want to launch any satellite, so they are deciding the path and row. So on the basis of the path and row, they are covering the area of the globe. So here we can see the sensor side. So sensor is the, again, two types. One is the active and the another one is the passive. In the active also, there was a two kind of the sensor, scanning and non-scanning. And passive side also the scanning and non-scanning. What is the basic difference in between two sensors, active sensor side and the passive sensor side? So basic difference is active sensor side, they have their own source of the light. Means these active sensors can take a pictures at a night time also. But the passive sensor, basically, they are using the external source of the light. So whatever the light is coming from a sun and whatever the backscattering is coming from a 
feature those kind of the things they are basically they are capturing so this is the basic difference again the characterization of the any satellite and the sensor side again the orbit side what i explained earlier polar and the geostationary is energy source passive and active solar and terrestrial spectra again visible uh, ultraviolet ultraviolet infrared and the microwave that also i will show you how the we can see the spectra spectrum basically so let's say if any light is coming in a which particular wavelength that light is coming on a basis of that the features characteristics also will change basically on a basis of that uh, spectra then the measurement uh, measurement technique side again scanning non scanning or imaging sounder side and the resolution side so resolution again there were a four types of resolution spatial temporal spectral and radiometric spatial resolution means let's say if on a ground there is a one building if we want to if we want to able to see the building in an image means the spectral spatial resolution is very high if we are not able to see that building, then the spatial resolution is low. So in a resolution side also, we are going to get uh, the satellite data in a 10 meter spatial resolution, 5 meter, 0 0.5 centimeter, uh, 0 0.5 meter spatial resolution and all. Then the, the application side, again, it's a weather side, land mapping side, atmospheric physics side, and the atmospheric chemistry, air quality, radiation budget. There is a N number of applications. So people are working in a different, different domain or vertical and they are using the same satellite data image for the different different purpose let's say if uh, my area of interest is uh, agriculture so i will get a same satellite image but i will work on agriculture side but the another one person who is very interested in the urban side so he he will use also the same satellite image but he his area of interest or the target is the urban settlement side so he will target the urban settlement where is the urban is uh, urban area is there and all what is the density and the other thing if someone wants to work on absurd side, so he will concentrate on the water bodies. Where is the water body? Water bodies. What is the extent? How it's going to change the extent each a yearly basis and all. Now this is the electromagnetic spectrum. What I told earlier. So this is the visible range. Where this range we can get it in a uh, uh, in our eye as well as the camera, but. Here we can see the radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, ultraviolet, X-ray, and the gamma gamma rays. So every satellite has a different kind of the spectrum. Spectrum means band. We can say so in a visible. Let's say here you are going to get a band, blue band, green band, red band, but I'll infrared side again you are going to get a near infrared band one near infrared band two then microwave side you, know, you are going to get a, a SAR data or the microwave data so these are the the different kind of the wavelength, uh, wavelength is available on the basis of the wavelength the characteristics of the sensor also will change so here what i explained the spatial resolution right so here the different different satellite or the sensor is available lensset 7 let's say so this is the lensset 7 so same set same area is here but we can see the satellite image coverage is very big so and this uh, this lensset 7 spatial resolution is the 13 meter then uh, another one we can say the spot spot has a very small 60 uh, by 60 kilometer area only he can cover uh, that this satellite can cover at a 20 meter spatial resolution if we want to know the iconos he can cover only this much area 11 by 11 kilometer area but the feature what we want to to extract through satellite data that will be a different so on a basis of the spatial resolution, spectral, temporal re resolution basis, the use cases also will change. Now, data analytics size, this is also a very important part in a remote sensing and the GIS side. So there were a data source. So basically street data, we can say, so somebody uh, has a data sets on a paper. But if I want to 
use that data with the with the satellite data or i want to integrate then what is the required i have to convert that data in a digital format so here the digital format data we we are converting under the gis side so that one layer we can get it very easily same side and same thing for the building data side also and the visitation data these data sets also we are going to get through satellite data as well as if someone has uh, this kind of the data sets on a paper then what is the important thing anyone can digitize those data sets but where those features are available on the ground those features sit properly on the ground so what is required for that particular part so for that we have to do the geo referencing geo referencing in in the sense let's say there is a latitude longitude when we are going um, so on the same place we, what we will do we are, we will reach there we will collect the lat long and same lat long when we are going to put on uh, this digitized image then only he will sit uh, that then only this layer will sit properly on uh, that particular place so this is the the kind of the process basically when we are talking about the data so here satellite data will come then image processing will uh, so this is the processing all kind of the element then there were a number of processes uh, if we want to do the image analysis so again we can do it through the supervised unsupervised method and then once you will do the classic once you will classify the image then you can you do the accuracy assessment accuracy assessment is very important whatever you uh, or we collected the data through ground we have to validate otherwise people can ask uh, what is the the accuracy so valid for the validation purpose and the training purpose in situ data in situ data means ground data is very important so uh, uh, without remote sensing people have to collect the the data sets if they want to cover the one particular district they have to co to collect the whole district data but here they can collect only the 10% data for the 10% uh, uh, data for the whole district out of that 10% data 3 to 4% data we can use for the training purpose and the rest of the data we can use the validation purpose if the the training side again the aiml algo is not giving a very good result or the satisfactory result that time the training side we can use up to 7% data and 3% data we can use for the validation purpose so i can show the case study so through the satellite data we can uh, you know do the mapping where is the let's say this is the forest fire so this is very hilly area so it is not possible to reach on a, that particular time period and how much area is going to affect through the forest fire so through satellite data we can easily identify where is the uh, the forest fire what is the extent so in the right side you can see the forest um, false color composite image this is the satellite image this is the natural image and this is the color infrared image where the vegetations we can see in a red color but the other part we can see in a different color so here you you we can see the after the fire the 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 things how it's look like same area we classified here how much area is coming under the uh, forest fire side this is the flood mapping side we can see the left side part there were uh, there is nothing but after precipitation or the the you know the rainfall happen in a very uh, you know huge amount in a very little time so what happened there were the lowland areas we can see here the black black uh, spot we can get it very easily so here we uh, this area is coming under the the under the flood side so basically this is uh, you know in a when whenever we are mapping the the flood area and all that time we are not using the optical data optical data uh, because that time the uh, the very huge cloud cover is available on that particular area so in those cases we have to use the microwave data so microwave data character what is the basic and the what is the beauty of the the microwave data it can penetrate the uh, very easily to clouds 
so when it can penetrate easily to shroud so we can get our data in a, that particular time period and we can map it very easily now same thing is the tropical cyclone site how it's before tropical storm and after a tropical storm we can see how, how much difference we can see here easily now the mapping for the damage or hell storm side we can see here so this is the uh, ndvi normalized difference vegetation index what we made it uh, or what we derived from a satellite data so these are the rice fields we can see before hell storm there we can say the condition <coughs> so condition side this is the scale if the the crop value is above 6.5 and all so crop is in a good condition but after hell storm we can see the condition is very bad so moderately damage side it's coming uh, after hell storm so this kind of the assessment we can do very easily <coughs> if we want to do the same thing manually then definitely we have to send the people they have to be that kind of the the skill and they then only they can map it easily but they uh, again they are not able to cover the whole area within a one day but here within half within a one day let's say today if i'm getting a satellite image i can cover the whole area very easily <coughs> so this is the another one use case in the agriculture side so through satellite data this is the one district and one person only he generated the insight. So that time only I was working on this particular district and I generated these many insights through satellite data and we verified each and every uh, each and every thing like uh, let's say crop acreage estimation. We estimated the crop acreage. So how much area is coming under the pulse site. Then which particular uh, village is coming early zone site, which particular image is going the late sun side and all kind of the insights we can generate then here the, we can see the major harvest area so each and every date wise how much area has been harvested this kind of the insights we can easily generate through satellite data here we can see the, the crops so through satellite data we classified maize area paddy area ragi area pulses area and we compared also a, uh, compare in the sense within a season let's say season karib season will start from a june to november within a june to november three times we estimated either if there were a late zone area so let's say if manual from um, if we want to generate insight through uh, uh, human then definitely one person can go at a time in a one place and uh, definitely if he again we will tell him you have to go again there again you have to collect then definitely sometimes he can go sometimes he can write the you know the area and all uh, readings blindly or something like that so those kind of the loopholes also we can remove through satellite data now this is the another one use case this work we did for the the uh, maharashtra government so pest condition estimation we want to do at a village level so, and the, so this we can see pest estimation conditions as well as the sowing window we can see here very easily within a uh, 10 villages which particular village is coming under the early zone site or where the conditions are feasible to do to for the sowing and all these all insights we can easily generate here also we can see the how the agriculture stress conditions are going on so this kind of the insights we can easily generate because here in a satellite data what we are getting we are getting the information at a pixel level pixel in the sense let's say yeah, if uh, I am taking a Sentinel-2 data. Sentinel-2 spatial resolution is 10 meter. So let's say uh, in a one single shot, I am going to get a 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer one image. Within an image, each and every pixel size will be a 10 meter by 10 meter. So all information will capture under the 10 meter by 10 meter pixel size. Second, this is the crop damage assessment, what we can see. So in a, when we compare with the 
previous year then how much area has been damaged due to the uh, phylum effect this is the Gan uh, ganjam district we can see so within uh, this particular area we can see this area where the damage area is very high in within uh, this particular uh, taluka we can say or the block so these kind of the insights uh, uh, due to tipli cyclone we can see this area has been damaged uh, very uh, you know severely so this kind of the insights also we can generate easily and we can provide to to government or any uh, you know ndma or the other go governing body so they can take a uh, or they can make a different kind of the policies to to provide the compensation and all so this is the another one uh, the use uh, case we can say the in the agriculture side so here we can see different different districts one person can cover the different different districts and he can do the uh, analysis in the 2018 2019 as well as he can compare also very easily so in a 2018 if uh, within a district uh, uh, maize area was let's say 50,000 hectare was there but in a 2019 there uh, that area has been increased or is what kind of the the pattern is going on within a, that particular area let's say in a one particular farm farmer has grown uh, maize in a 2018 but in a 2019 uh, he changed that particular crop so those kind of the the insights also we can generate very easily through satellite or the through remote sensing uh, technology so this is the another one uh, kind of the use case at a farm level monitoring so we can see this is the particular farm within a farm we can identify easily this is this particular pocket is in a good condition we can see the red color here so in a red color side this red color the other condition is not very good maybe due to stress or the other uh, uh, thing so this kind of the the what kind of the precautions are uh, if uh, someone wants to manage that particular form he can manage very easily so this uh, study also has been done uh, within a uh, you know the area we can identify what kind of the 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 uh, you know varieties are available for that uh, within uh, that particular crop those kind of, of insights also we can generate so here we can see these many insights we are generating means every six days interval we are getting a satellite image so we are doing a continuous monitoring if there is a some kind of the issue will come we can capture easily you can see here this is the date so we covered the whole season from June to, to uh, here, from uh, this is the Ravi season from October to Jan. And how the, what kind of the pattern we are getting at a farm level, this information also we can, you know, uh, this kind of the information also we can generate easily through satellite data. Now, this is the another one use cases. So here we can say different, different kind of the farms are available. Each and every farm wise, what is the condition at a every day, date wise. This part also we can see and on a basis of the condition, we can segregate, okay, where we have to focus. Let's say if some places harvesting is going on. So which places harvesting is going on? Or if we want to forecast, okay, uh what is the sowing date on a basis of the what is the tentative harvesting date will come this kind of the insights also we can generate very easily through satellite data now this is the another one use cases uh, use case for the crop yield estimation side so before harvest we can generate the yield we can calculate the yield so this is the paddy crop yield estimation at a village level not only the village even though the farm level when we are going to zoom in we can understand which particular farm is generating how much yield of that particular crop if we want to to do the average out or the cumulative then we can calculate how much uh, yield can come at a village level also now this is the another one use case on a water management side so 
here on a basis of the satellite data we can calculate the how much water is required to to um, uh, required for the particular crop let's say if we want to 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 show or we want to produce a wheat crop within a district then how much area is coming and how much water is required to produce that particular crop so those kind of the the decision intelligence also we can generate here easily you can see here the control water resource allocation as per the requirement estimation of the irrigation requirement irrigation practices also we can provide uh, you know through satellite data monitoring or advisory site where they have to put the water what kind of if their weather stress condition is going to form then definitely they have to put the water and all this is the disaster management site what we provided the solutions to central government as well as the uh, kerala state government that time uh, in a uh, 2018-19 when uh, that time the flood situations came on a decided uh, so we can see how we can so that time only three two persons uh, uh, worked on uh, this particular part and they covered you can imagine they they covered the whole Karnat, uh, whole Kerala, Kerala and on a basis of the satellite data they pro we generated the insights and we told to to government where is the flood extent what is the potential depth of the flood so on a basis of that they can manage their re rescue operations so this is the another one part how we are generating the products what i showed earlier so farm boundary irrigation maps these all kind of the data sets we are generating through the satellite data there's a land uh, like land preparation, sowing, germination, jointing, flowering, uh, filling, and the harvest. This is the all stages are available uh, from a crop side. So these are the stages. So what we are using, we are using a satellite data that is covering the whole uh, area of the this one. Now this is the the detailed one. You can see the spectral profile, and on a basis of the spectral profile, we are getting a data set and we are generating the spectra of each and every farm voice so easily we can understand okay where is the the or what kind of the situation is there so like you can see here this is the one particular farm but here the satellite data sets are, are not available due to mm, cloud cover especially this kind of the challenges we can see in a kharif uh, season so for that what we did we made a our own product that is the signal so whenever we are getting a, this kind of the blank images due to cloud cover that time we are generating the synthetic Im images and these synthetic images are same like a satellite data so for the this is our patent uh, actually uh, this is the patent number and we got uh, this patent from a government side so on a basis of that, we can generate the the uh, synthetic uh, satellite data, and this is here we use a uh, deep learning, machine learning, and AI. All kind of the the things we can get it here. So basically, let's say tomorrow I want uh, one particular satellite, but uh, image, but tomorrow let's say there were a very huge cloud cover so due to that huge cloud cover i got a, this kind of the data sets black data blank data so on a basis of the other satellite data micro micro data and the, the nearest uh, sentinel 2 data we gen, we are generating the synthetic images now we can use the satellite data in a surface soil organic carbon site this is the kind of the methodology and we can see the organic carbon percentage in a whole area we can calculate through satellite data very easily so we can see here uh, what is the organic car uh, soil organic carbon in a within a that particular area or at a farm level this is the another one or the or patent so this is the surface soil moisture site so basically at present 10 kilometer at a 10 kilometer special resolution, uh, surface soil moisture is available. You can see in the left side, everywhere it's looking same. But when we are generating the 
this side we can see the difference different different kind of the soil moisture percentage is available so this is the one kind of the the patent also uh, we filed already so you, we can see every date wise what kind of the changes are coming at a farm level as well as at a district level so this is the another one the validation site how it's uh, look like on a uh, this level as well as the this is the sensitive uh, sensitivity analysis also we have to do because of what i told validation and the correlation uh, with the input parameters if we are not going to do this kind of the things then definitely nobody is going to accept this technology so this this is the uh, this is very essential part for a remote sensing site so this is the the thank you to everyone this is from my side uh, just give me one sec i want to to show or uh, uh, platform so there anyone can uh, anyone can go you uh, you guys can see my screen no sir only ppt you can stop sharing the ppt and go to the okay okay Now, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Chat. Okay. Okay. Visible. So, here you can see what I told the signal side. What yeah, we have the pattern. This. Yeah, you can share this link in chat window, sir, so that we can use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. So here anyone can go, and uh, you know. He can log in, and if uh, anyone wants to use, he anyone can use it easily. I'll put the link in a chat box. Don't worry. So here, uh, yes, I will finish it first, and then I will share the link. So here you can see. I'll zoom in. So you can see here there was nothing but here you can see the data set apart from this anyone can register here and log in and then he can use the the other features also easily so login and uh, these other things are required i will put this uh, link to every uh, with i am going to share with the everyone so anyone can go there and he, uh, anyone can register easily and they can use it so here basically we are providing a uh, data sets so let's say if people are coming from a different different background they don't know how to do the pre-processing of the satellite data and all so just they can come here and they can use it easily from here if they want if they want to do the use the data explorer they just they have to select and they can use it and if they want to download the data sets from this web uh, platform this is also freely available but if they want uh, other insights the advanced insights so that time there there is a the premium user concept they have to go through the premium user concept side that's it so thank you for from my side uh, if guys you have any question you can ask please yeah yeah any question for the participant uh, sir shall i ask sir yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir uh, uh, whatever you uh, that camera entirety already it is fixed or uh, uh, selective places uh, uh, you uh, from uh, geology department they will operate no so anyone can use the the, the camera side you are talking about the satellite camera side ah yes sir yeah so geology department side basically they want to do the mineral mapping if i'm not wrong mineral mapping or they want to identify the fracture uh, fractures and other kind of the the insights they want to to generate right so in those cases they have to go uh, they have to use a they can use the satellite data they can use multi spectral 
as well as the hyperspectral data. So on uh, sensor, everything will be fixed on a, uh, whenever uh, the satellites are going to launch. That time only you have to select what kind of the, the satellite data is required for that particular application. That's it. So how they, where they will save, sir? Suppose you take the example, I want a one month back information. Yeah, you want to, uh, you want a one back, uh, one month back information, then what you have to do, you have to, to select that particular area. Let's say you select uh, one particular district, uh, for example, Bangalore, right? And you want uh, information what was there in a one month back, right? So what you have to do, you have to go to, uh, uh, you know, the, the satellite website and there the satellite data sets are available. Just you have to select the date year and you can download freely. So here again, satellite data set, two types of data sets are available. One is, one is freely available like a Landsat 8, Landsat 9, Sentinel 2, Sentinel 1, MODIS data sets. But there were a commercial satellites. If you want to capture a particular area at a very high resolution, then we have to pay some amount to those companies or those organizations. Just we have to tell, okay, we want uh, this particular date image and uh, we have to pay the money and they can uh, share those images with us. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, any other question from the participant? Any other question? Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, can I ask a question, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, sir, in case of if it is a smog or pollution related data, so is, will it be the same way to generate the synthetic images? Yeah. So yeah. So if there were a uh, let's say fog or polluted area is there, right? So yeah. what is your application? It's depends. Let's say if you want to target an agriculture area, right? And we are not getting optical images due to fog or cloud cover or uh, you know the other uh, thing, other atmospheric things, right? So in those cases, it's very simple. We can uh, generate our synthetic images. For that, we you uh, or if any organization want those synthetic images, they have to put a one request on a, or a web uh, or link what I what I shared here in a signal site. We can generate the synthetic images. That is the one. Second thing, if there were a fog or uh, any kind of the other atmospheric uh, things are available in a, that particular area, in those cases, you can use the microwave data also. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Any question, sir? I'm checking, sir. I think fine, sir. No other question, I think. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. I request to Jennifer to propose a formal vote of thanks. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So, very good evening, everyone. I feel extremely honored to give this vote of thanks on behalf of everyone to our respected speaker of the day, Mr. Pradeep Bison, sir, for sharing his immense insights on the topic, predicting the AI-based weather, soil, agronomy, demand forecasting, and crop planning, where we learn about space data applications, remote sensing, satellites, sensors, and agriculture domains where these can be utilized. The session was very informative and interesting. Sir, I wholeheartedly thank you for sparing time from your busy schedule and handling this session and making it a grand success. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I would like to thank all the coordinators of Indian Institute of Plantation Management for organizing and coordinating this program. I would also like to thank all the participants for your encouragement and active participation, which was the key for the session success. Thank you, everyone. Now, there will be a short break for 10 minutes and the next session will begin at 8 p.m. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pratip, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. You, sir. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So next session will be from crop in. Uh, we'll start at uh, eight five. Maybe we'll take ten minutes break. Uh, eight five. We'll start the next session uh, from crop in um, uh, agri tech company. So you'll be talk about different product and um, uh, you know uh, agri uh, cloud storage all these things. So if you want, you can log out and log in the same link, or you can stay with the same link. We'll again, we'll start at 8.5. Is it okay? 
and after the session today session after 8 to 9 we will have this cropping after that we will have mcq test as per the act the after the offline se uh, online session we have to conduct only mcq test so there will be a link will be shared uh, uh, around 9 o'clock we will have half an hour time for mcq test so any doubt anything you can uh, uh, call us and you can type it in chat window so we'll start the next session at uh, 8 5 then uh, it will go up to nine o'clock again nine o'clock to nine thirty mcq test is it okay is it clear i think it's fine i'll uh, i'm not closing this window will i'll just uh, unmute and uh, stop my video again we'll start at eight five question will be easy sir. don't worry sir i guess I have given good evening. Hello, hi, sir. Uh, hello, Nagbushan. I'll make you as a co host. Uh, yeah. So, uh, session just got over. Uh, we start at 8 5. Uh, is it okay, Nagbushan? Sure, sure. No problem. Uh, just five minutes before only session got over. Sure. Uh, um, we have given 10 minutes break. Uh, we'll start at 8 5 or 8 10. We'll start. Uh, Sure, no problem. Sir. I made you as a co host so that you can share all this. Sure.
Yeah, shall we start the session? Now, Bushra, ready? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll start the session. Uh, I request the uh, coordinator to introduce the resource person. Then he'll, she will hand over the session to you. You can cut in. I request sure. to introduce formally introduce. We will start, sir. Yes, sir. So welcome to 60 Day Continuous uh, Professional Development Program on Digital Food and Agri Business. Sponsored by Atal AICT, New Delhi, organized by the Indian Institute of Plantation Management. And I would like to uh, welcome our uh, Nagabushnam from Crop in Technology. I would like to call upon our uh, uh, Sangabi. Can you please uh, brief about our resource person profile? Yeah, Jennifer will introduce you. Jennifer, Jennifer, sorry. Yes, sir. So a very pleasant good evening to the respected resource person, coordinators of the program and our beloved participants. I feel extremely privileged to introduce our respected speaker of the session, Mr. Nagabushan Patil. Mr. Nagabushan Patil, sir, is the proud alumni of Indian Institute of Plantation Management, who is currently working as customer experience manager at Cropin Technology Solutions. Sir is well experienced in managed client onboarding processes, ensuring that their expectation and goals are fully met. Sir has implemented and maintained the business over 40 existing and new accounts across India, Southeast Asia and Africa regions. Sir is well versed in developing a deep understanding of how customers are using their product, their pain points, what they like, what they don't like and what could make them happier. Also ensuring all time positive customer experience by communication and maintaining the professional relationship. Sir has been awarded as highest NPS achiever in the customer satisfaction service. So now I invite Mr. Nagabushan Patil sir to take forward the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jennifer. So, hi team. So as already Jennifer has introduced, I am Nagabushan. So, I've been working as a customer success manager in Propin Technology Solutions. So just uh, let me start. Uh, I think I have a co-host. So let me start sharing my screen. So just put on your camera so that we can take one photo. Huh? Let me screen share. Sure, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So kindly confirm me once you can see my screen. It's loading. Yeah, we can see now. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Sir. So just to, as already briefed about myself, so just I want to take you through what Cropin is doing, how it's helping the uh, agribusiness management, mainly in input industry and other industries. So as you know, currently, uh, like the as India is growing, even the population is growing. To meet those population, uh, especially like uh, food scarcities and other things, to meet that, we need a per acre. We need to increase the per acre value of the crop. So that depends how we are increasing, what all things to be done. So it might like to increase the per acre value of a crop. There might be a, some. Ch uh, challenges like it might be uh, a global uh, like climatic conditions there might be supply chain challenges uh, due to climatic conditions adverse climatic conditions there will there will be a lo low yield of the crops and harvest there is a lack of tra traceability so from farm to fork whatever the traceabilities are there so we are unable to get out of it like we are not knowing from where which farmer this is produce is coming where it is going and other things so same way as the market uh, nowadays the market is high volatile the prices are increasing due to some inflation and other things so to mitigate all the risks some of the industries and some of the partners are going into a digitalization of the farmers crops and everything else like supply chain business they want to digitalize everything to bring into a single platform in a similar way cropping is a one platform where they can bring out all the Digital, digitalization processes into a, a single platform. So just I want to take you through Cropin, what Cropin does. So it's a, a intelligence data powered platform 
where which allows digital solutions to all the key stakeholders key stakeholders are nothing but uh, as a there are many personas in a key stakeholders so they they should get a values with the digital platform in a complete agri chain business so might be in a transactions might be in a insights of the reports or might might be uh, doing some analysis based on that so here when i say personas personas are uh, differ from one comp uh, one industry to other industry when it comes to seed uh, agri input sector in agri input sector again we have a multiple branches like seed chemical and uh, other uh, some other uh, uh, branches so same way when it comes to food processing uh, there are some other personas so similarly we are helping all these uh, personas to give a complete digitalized solution with the help of a platform called cropin then who are the founders of cropin so just to brief about cropin krishna kumar and kunal prasad they are the founder of the cropin so the cropin was founded in 2010 and from there the journey begins of the cropin in 2013 the cropin has around 25 plus uh, customers then it has moved to in 2016 so we had more than 150 customers so then in 2018 so similarly the cropin is uh, growing every, uh, year by year so even cropin has awarded as a amazon aws uh, intelligence award in a smart risk so similarly we have different awards got back by the cropin and uh, as there are about uh, like we have received the fundings and we have raised many fundings in 2013 anku seeds they they were backed by the cropin and even when it comes to b series 20 million fundings was raised similarly the cropin presence in all over the world and cropin has introduced their branches in many branches in a different uh, regions like when it comes to amsterdam so we uh, there is a one more office at amsterdam and there is uh, another office in new delhi similarly the cropin has uh, moved forward so what are the products cropin is offering so how does it helps the agri business and food processing industries and other industries so here when it comes to crop uh, cropping so it's a saas based platform where you will get a uh, applications mobile applications web based applications all those two applications are available so the uh, let me take one by one so first a smart farm how does it helps what are the segments what are the values who are the users of this smart farm application so first uh, smart farm is a digitalization tool like it's a farm management tool it's completely the tool is completely hyper configurable whatever the changes you want to make you can make in that whatever data process you want to capture you can capture in that process so this smart farm has a we are catering to multiple segments like farming and food processing will be used seed productions agri chemical companies are using farm equipment companies are using government and development agencies are using so similarly all these segments people uh, customers are using the uh, smart farm why what value they get by using it so one they want to maximize their revenue they want to reduce the cost of inputs and other things and they 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 want to help the farmers not only helping so when it comes to uh, seed seed based industries or when it comes to agrochemical or government dev agencies they uh, when it comes to government and dev agencies they want to help the farmer to provide the right pops right uh, package of practices to the farmers and they want to help to understand what is the weather and all those things so that's how the smart farm going to help them and they get a value from that so what are the who are the key users as early mentioned a uh, farmer will be the key users and agronomists uh, field managers supervisors as divisional manager country manager whatever, whatever may be the hierarchy of the uh, companies they can use this platform next we have some additional uh, platforms one is acre square and root trace so acre square is a one uh, recently we have uh, changed this terminologies so acre square is nothing but cropping connect 
so here the crop in connect helps the farmers to connect between the customer and the farmers so it's a farmer engagement module we call so here farmer will get a uh, farmer can register his plot he can do the area audit nothing but he can measure his land and he will get a right package of practices whatever he is follow uh, he need to follow he, he will get a notifications in app notifications where if any customer wants to send any in app notifications so he can send the in app notifications to help the farmer to grow and achieve his harvest targets same way root trace uh, it's a crop in trace it's nothing but we have a farm to fork traceability here so what is the far who is a farmer who is growing the crop until where it is like post harvest uh, till pre harvest management what all activities he has done might be uh, like just to give an example here so you are uh, in the some of the companies where they will do the contract farming so they want to understand from which farmer we got the seeds or we got this harvest so they want to track back so in that case the root trace will help to that team where they can track back of the complete produce from which farmer it got what are the quantities how much harvest he got what all package of practices he followed how, how much chemical he apply so all these things can be traced out by this root trace module and we have a satellite and ai based module called matrisk so this basically helps to the segments where they want to completely have a overlook so might be banking insurance agri business the, the, these are the companies where they want to understand the complete crop activities without intervention of the human so the the uh, when it comes to satellite ai uh, we have a set of modules where it helps to understand what is a crop how it is growing what are the different pat patterns might be yield estimation ndvi crop health and other things so going forward one by one i will take it up and i will explain you in detail how we are catering to what all business we are catering what are the use cases we have uh, solved by all these platforms just to have a uh, understanding how our product is it's it's completely user friendly uh, as i mentioned it's co completely configurable system even you can configure the system role wise so if you want to have a data security in a system you can do that also if you want to configure a system based on the role wise you can configure that and currently we have all the digitalization practices which which can be done on the crop in platform so next i will take you through the crop in website where you will get complete understanding of the crop in what it's currently doing how many uh, how many customers got useful use cases and other things uh, just a minute so hope every everyone can see my screen now yes sir. we can see the website now yes thank you sir so this is a crop in website where you can go through this crop in website you will get all insights here so in the recently we have launched a crop in cloud crop in cloud is nothing but we have a three layer system where uh, as i mentioned there there are application system uh, where crop in is providing their own applications then that there is a data layer then there is a crop intelligence layer so all these three combines and makes a, a, a crop in cloud so this product uh, we are the world's first intelligence agricultural cloud launched by cropin team so as i go down you you can go through these platforms uh, like this website you will get a more insights over here how cropin is helping the other teams so i will take you one by one as i mentioned cropin apps cropin data hub and cropin intelligence these three are the major key rolling uh, features where we are deploying to our customers so just when it comes to crop in apps we have a different uh, apps as i said uh, smart farm it is nothing but crop in grow this is a highly customizable as per your requirements as per the use case we will configure the system and we will hand over to customer and uh, which provides a high value to the customer where he can understand what i am capturing why i am capturing what value i am getting from the system so same way crop in connect so cropping connect is a, a uh, application which helps to the farmer 
So farmer will have his own application, his own credentials. He will log into the application. He can see all the, uh, he can see his plots. He can see what activities he can, he need to do. There will be advisories. There will be alerts. There will be a POPs. Everything will be available on this uh, Crop and Connect application. Crop and Trace. It's farm to fork traceability, as I mentioned earlier. So when we go to this cropping grow, so what use cases and what are interest for which industries we are catering when it comes to cropping grow? So it's a farmer digitalization tool, complete farm digitalization tool, which helps in to maximize the per acre value of the business. So what is cropping grow? How it's how it can be efficient enough to achieve their goals, customer goals, nothing but client goals. So just what are the key features are available in this and how it benefits to the customers. So first, as I mentioned one by one, this is a cropping grow application here. You can see the main key features are one is geotag. So wherever it might be a plot, so just to help you to understand in a one small use case, just I want to take one small use case here. So consider a company who is doing a contract farming. He want to understand where are the, his farmers. He want to collect all the farmer details. He want to understand with which farmer he is working. He want to collect the complete farmer details. Then he want to know which plot the farmer is working, how much land he has, what all activities he is doing. So in a, in a contract farming business, sometimes some companies will provide seeds to the farmer and they will collect the harvest back from the farmer itself in case of seed productions. So in that case, a company wants to know what all package of practices he should follow, whether he's following or not, what all chemicals he is spraying, whether he's following our advisors or not. They want to have a typically understand on that. Because it's a seed-based company, he want to have the seeds as his next uh, next saleable seeds. So once customer or client or any seed-based company provides seed to a farmer, so they will make a contract with the farmer. So they will collect all the basic details. What all basic like farmer name and all those basic details will be can be added to the cropping platform. One. We have two ways here, how they can add. One is bulk upload. If the company has the complete contracts, they can bulk upload it or they can integrate with the other ERP systems and they can add via mobile application also. So first they will uh, do the farmer registration. Then they will do the plot registration. They want to understand on which plot currently these seeds will be growing. Then they want to know how much area. There is a dependency here. So if farmer says, I have a one acre, then companies provide the seeds, which will be viable to that one acre. So in a similar case, they want to have a track of that seeds where the farmer has been grown or whether he is sowing in a right area or not. So in that case, what crop in uh, smart farm has, smart farm application has here, we have a geotag and area audit system where the field officer goes to the farmer provides the seeds. Once the sowing is done, what field staff will do? He will do the geotag and area audit of the plot. So once he does the area audit of the plot, then the supervisor supervisors will have a visibility on a web platform where he can go through where is that plot. Once he clicks on that plot, he will get a complete boundary of that plot. It's It will be having a complete visibility there. The supervisor will have a complete visibility. In a similar way, once the crop is sown, the farmer need to follow some package of practices to have a proper yield, good quality of the seeds, because those seeds will be going forward, will be sold in a market to other farmers. So then in that case, the field officer, the set of field officers will every week or bi-weekly once, they will visit to those plots, they will collect the data in the mobile application. Like it, uh, just to give an example here. So uh, some of the seed companies will collect the data uh, belonging to like, what is a stage currently? What is a crop stage currently? How it is growing? 
then they want to collect some set of activities data like it might be a vegetative stage at the vegetative stage what crop what's happening how many leaf stage it is and all those data points they will collect so in that case uh, here what happens uh, the field officer will collect all the data points and he will monitor whether the farmer is doing right package of practices or not same way whatever the data has been captured by the field staff it will be completely available to the supervisor and their higher managements by these data points they will derive the insights like they they have the set of targets so if consider they have a contacted with the 100 farmers they have a target of 100 kg of seeds or 200 kg of seeds to be output from that field similar way all these data derived into insights to the supervisors and their managers and the management leadership team where they have complete visibility by this uh, smart farm application with the help of the reports and other data analysis tools they they can fetch a reports from the smart farm and they can do their own analysis how much yield they are getting what all crops they have grown how much acres it is everything will be available even cropin has a customizable dashboards where you can build the dashboards here in a cropping platform like uh, if any seed seed use case there will be different use cases some of the customer want to know how what is a crop what is the yield estimation for that in that case cropping can build a report can customize a dashboard where it will help a management to know in which area what is a crop how much yield it's what is expected yield in a similar way this smart farm will help for all the digitalization process so as i mentioned the use cases what all use cases can be resolved here so as uh, you can go through this platform you will get all the use cases down here so what for which company what use case we have resolved how it has been impacted to that uh, company how they they have increased their businesses and everything so just to give a small example here you can see east west seed has implemented the farm management solution in across the six countries and they have digitalized the platform and uh, they have around 14000 plus farmers 35 plus crops 400 plus varieties and to the 21000 hectares of land here area audit is nothing but they have done the land measurement so that's a area audit that's how we solve the seed based industry use cases here so the smart farm can be used in multiple ways so uh, like not only seed based uh, seed based industries uh, food processing industries can be used so just to give a small example how food processing industry can be used this how food processing industry will use this so basically food processing industry want to know from which farmer they are getting the final output because after that they are going to process that and they are going to generate a value from that harvest so they want to trace it back track it back so in that case food processing industries want to know from which farmer i am getting the harvest what is the quantity how much harvest we are getting then what are the pest and diseases because when it comes to food processing industries they will do some export businesses also there there will be a pesticide limit permits right so they want to know what is the limits so in that case they will they want to know what chemicals they have used how much quantity they have used and they want to know phi value also there so in a similar use cases we uh, cropping is resolving all these use cases with the help of smart farm next we have uh, another cropping connect so cropping connect it's a basically the farmer based application i can say so where uh, nowadays every farmer has a uh, android phones so even farmer is getting educated more and more and he want to understand more and more on a digital side so to know that how much farmer is interested and to give a proper solutions to a farmers by a companies so what they will do they will deploy this cropping connect application to the farmers 
So this Crotin Connect will be available in a multiple languages, whatever the language which are available in a Crotin Connect. So uh, th that can be deployed in a multiple languages and that farmer can use it seamlessly. So here how the farmer can, how it profits to farmer, why he should use this Echo Square or a Crotin Connect. So farmer has a basic knowledge of how to do the activities. But in some cases, due to adverse climatic conditions, there might be attack of pest, there might be a uh, improper uh, weather-based conditions, the crop might get lost. So in that cases, so what a farmer can get a free advisories from this uh, application is, like we have an inbuilt uh, library also in this application where the farmer can use it. So how does farmer get benefits? So here farmer can monitor his plot. He will have the weather based uh, application in his application. He can see weather on next seven days. What is the weather in his plot and what, uh, what the activities he need to follow up. So cropping in this cropping connect, many companies will use it as a marketing tool. Also, they will use it as a farmer connect tool. Also, they want to engage with the farmers. So in that case, how farmer can be used this? So in a CSR activities, most of them will use it. So how farmer can be engaged? One thing, if they provide this application, farmer will open the application and he will see his plot and there will be a different sections. One, he will get advisories of weather. Second, he will come to know which crop, which plot he is working and what package of practices he need to follow to avoid some adverse climatic conditions and other things. Similarly, the farmer want to know how much harvest he might get and what are the alerts. So in some cases, some farmers know to read and write also. They are much uh, advanced nowadays. So in those farmers, how it helps to those farmers is farmer can go to alert section. There, if the farmer has any in a plot, it, there are any alerts like pest and diseases. If the farmer want to know that what disease it is and what practices I need to follow, what are the chemicals I need to spray. In that case, there is an alert module in the mobile application in a crop in connect. If he opens that, he will get a complete list of diseases where he can go through it. He can identify the disease and he can do the practices without help of any other people. If he knows to read and write in a such a way that the application is very smooth enough to you uh, use it and it can be farmer can take a, a more advantage or more help from this application where he can increase his productivity whatever the practices he need to follow at the right time if he follows he can increase his productivity he can increase his profit also here so what are the key use case we are solving here Just let me take you through. So already Cropin has partnered the government of Bihar in Madhya Pradesh and uh, World Bank of the project Jivika across 244 villages. So here they have improved the farmer lives by providing this application. Like it, it helps farmers to know how, how much to irrigate, what, what practices you need to follow, water management practices might be, some pest and disease forecast, whatever might be. So all those forecast data points will be available in a crop in connect. He will go through that, he will follow it and he will take a, uh, help of the crop in connect. He has a higher productivity in this. So uh, like more than 90% of the farmers who are satisfied with the applications in a, G, uh, in a Jivika, across Jivika, 244 villages. So many farmers took benefit of this application to have a higher productivity and higher profits in their crops. So next, uh, once cropping connect has been done, then we have a cropping trace. This is a very important part where every company wants to know from where I am getting this. Even nowadays. As a customer, I want to know 
from which farmer I am getting this product or from which field I am getting, from which location I am getting this product. Nowadays, you can see everywhere on every product, we can see a QR code where in some of the uh, products you can see from which farmer it has been came, uh, from which vendor it has been came, all those details will be there. In some of the QR codes, you will get a company details, such a way that here, this traceability solution helps many of the companies and export agencies to have a complete track of harvest. That's how we help here. So it generates a QR code where if some person scans it, he will get a complete page where he can see the farmer name, from which village this has been, from which plot, what was the condition of that plot, is there any alerts, is there any pest and diseases, or what is the harvest quantity, everything will be available on this receipt once the QR code has been scanned. That's how we are helping to have a complete track back of the system of the uh, crop from farm to till harvest management. This is how traceability helps. So then we have a cropping data hub. This cropping data hub is nothing but whatever the data has been collected from this obligations will be stored here. And this data hub is a place where we can integrate the other platforms data as well as so when it comes to IoT drones, other sensors and everything. So just to give a small uh, example here. So one of the industry or uh, some of the agencies, they have a data points. So seed, the seed industry want to have a drone data points and they want to collect the data from the drone, like how the crop, what are the sprays, they have done everything. That data, they want to do some output analysis and they want to bring it to a single platform. Like they are capturing some data points in a one platform and drone data point in another platform and they are doing some analysis. So to avoid all these things, the drone data can be integrated in the cropping data hub where with the help of APIs, they can transfer all the data to the data hub and we have an intelligence layer. In that intelligence layer, they can get a maximum of uh, value through all the data points based on their use cases. So in this intelligence layer, we have a different type of intelligence. One is plot level intelligence. Here, the AIML models will be running here. So in the pipelines. So what happens here, whenever the data comes, it will store here and the AML models, there are some of the AML models which are built and that will be, that will produce, uh, that will give a final output. What all details you have filled, what output you required might be like, just to take an example. So see, you know, other banking industries, just, 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 just let me go to a uh, banking industry or insurance industry. So here, the insurance industry want to understand like a farmer, what crop he has grown last year, what crop he has grown current year, what is the harvest at a last year and what might be the harvest for the current year if I provide a insurance to him, whether the crop is, uh, whether crop will come properly or not. In, in case of banking industry, if the bank want to give a loan, he want to have a complete understanding of that farmer. What are the crops he has grown? How much area he has? how much harvest he has collected last year and what is the expected harvest for the current year. Based on that, the banking industry will do some analysis and uh, they will provide the loans to the farmers. So this intelligence will help to those industries where they want to have a complete forecast of the plots. So here, even when it comes to uh, other industries, agri input industries, so they want to have a without the intervention of a human they want to know what is a crop how much it is growing what is a crop health what might be the yield everything within a by sitting at a single location so in that case cropping uh we have a aml models where we can fetch all these data points and we can provide a within a single dashboard we can provide all the outputs with the help of satellite-based images, we can provide all the outputs here. 
So what all outputs we can provide? What all use case we have resolved? How it will how it will be helpful for them? So when it comes to AI ML, so we have a modules one by one. I will uh, I will go through the modules. So at a plot intelligence level, like every plot in each plot, if you want to know, we have more uh, the there are modules which are different different modules which are built by the data science team. So when it comes to yield estimation. So here the modules are built in a such a way that if you want to know what is the expected yield from the crop. So just to take a small example here or a use case I want to explain here. So there is a potato growing farmer and a, a company wants to know how much yield I might get because a company is a pro food processing company. He want to understand when I will get the harvest what is the quantity of the harvest? So how I can do the supply chain and how I can get the proper output from that. So because here, when it comes to uh, fruits or vegetables, anything, there is a time uh, within six to seven days or within two to three days, there will be a time limit for that product. So within that time limit, he need to process that product. So he want to understand Understand what is a complete output I'm getting on my farm gate, how much quantity of harvest I'm getting on that day on my farm gate, how much I can do processing, how much output I can provide. All these calculations he want to make. So to make all these calculations, what is a farm gate harvest, how much I'm getting. So he need to have a complete insights on a contracted farmers, how many farmers he has contracted and what is the expected yield from that farmer. So if he has that expected yield before in hand, like uh, like if uh, his harvest, farmer's harvest is coming in next seven days or at a maturity stage, next 15, 20 days, he want to plan that. Food processing uh, in uh, person want to plan that on 20th or on 29th, I am getting a 60 tons of harvest. What should be the my processing? How much quantity I should process? What should be my output? So to, to do all this planning, he should know what is the harvest quantity I'm receiving at a farm gate on the same day. That's where the yield estimation module will come. So at a maturity phase of the crop, it helps to give an outcome of the expected yield. What is the expected yield from this plot? So I have a 10 acres of plot. What will be the my expected yield? That model will help you to provide that expected yield at a maturity phase only like before uh, th 30 days of the harvest or 20 days of the harvest based on the crop wise you will get that expected yield then uh, on the maturity phase itself that's how the AML models are built here same way when it comes to crop identification so what are the crop uh, crop stage identifications so just to take an example of a maize crop here, a maize crop has a different crop stages. So sowing stage, there will be different stages. A sowing stage, there will be a vegetative stage, there will be a flowering stage, de dazzling flowering stage, de dazzling stage, pre-harvest, harvest. Similarly, there will be a set of different crop life, uh, crop life cycle stages where with the help of AAML models, it will automatically detect the crop life cycle stages whenever required based on the time period. So every crop has their own life cycles and their own uh, their own uh, crop identification stages. So it will identify based on that. Crop health monitoring. This is a very important part here. So everything depends upon this based on the crop health only the yield, yield will depend okay so crop health what are the indices which can be given uh, which are provided a crop health and how it will help to the industries to understand how much health it is what is the expected yield so one is canopy greenness nothing but the ndvi so ndvi is a uh, range where it gives it will help you to understand there is a 10 acre of plot. In that 10 acre of plot, where is the highest growth? Where is the lowest growth? 
where is the risk of the growth? It will provide you all these details with the help of NDVI. You can understand crop canopy greenness index. You can understand. So here, even nitrogen uptake also. All these nitrogen uptake, water stress, everything can be understand by the crop health monitoring here. How does it works? So with the help of satellite images, the plot images has been uh, plot images will be deducted and it will be taken and it will be processed in the models. It will provide the output and there will be a fine tuning of that output also. In that case, in a NDVI, so in some cases, what happens, there will be a low, uh, low canopy greenness index. In that case, it, it shows or it tells that here the intake of the crop is very less and we might expect a less vegetative or a less harvest also from this area because it's not growing properly. Same way, if there are any water stress in the plot. So in, in some of the crops, what happens if there is a more water or a less water, the it will impact on the crop growth. So once it impacts on the crop growth, obviously it will impact on the yield. So that's why the crop canopy water stress or a greenness, it depends upon how the crop is growing on a plot. So even it will identify you in a plot, like just to give an example, consider there is a two acres of maize plot. In that two acres, in some of the corner of the plot, the growth will be very less due to there might be a shadow of the tree or it might, uh, it will not get a proper nutrients or a water or some other things. So in that case, in, in this dashboard, it will show that there is a Low, uh, lower maturity of the crop in this in this uh, plot at this corner. Easily farmer can identify or easily the uh, whichever the lots belongs to that farmer can identify it and they can provide more nutrition and a proper growth. If they won't provide that because it directly impacts on the yield, then the whatever the food processing industry or some other people, they will come and say that farmer that here there is a less growth. You need to take a, take a look on it. You need to improve that crop uh, crop stage there, crop health. Same way, there is this is early warning system also deuce model. We call it as deuce. So it helps to give an alarm between 15 days or 20 days, within 15 days or 20 days of attack. So it's it's like how I can, now like just to help you to understand, I have a plot, one acre of plot, and in that plot, due to some weather conditions or due to some other things, so before 15 days only, it will give a notification stating that within next 15 days, this pest or this disease might occur in a plot, kindly take care of it or kindly be cautious enough, take these uh, like, take some sprays, whatever if the advisors want to give. So those advisors will be given there. So that's how it helps. So it will intimate the person like next 15 days, this disease might occur. That's how the DUES model will work. So here we have solved many use cases, like when it comes to tea industry, one of the tea industries. So they have their own crop. Uh, they, they are facing a difficulty uh, to identify when the disease will occur, how much days it will stay. Because the higher duration of the disease stays, there is a more impact on the yield. Here tea, tea industry person want to have a high quality of a leaf to have a high quality of the uh, tea output. In that case, there might be a blister bite or there might be a TSM. Those are a very uh, higher diseases which break down the production, even it impacts on the yield also. So they want to know how to, uh, within a 15 days, they want to know how much, what is the severity of that disease, 
how much severity it might increase, how to reduce that. So in that cases, that use model will help. Then irrigation advisories. So when it comes to irrigation advisories, some of the customers we use these uh, irrigation advisories to help the farmers to get a right time to help them to understand and help them to do the proper irrigation to the crops. Because here everything lies on the yield only. So every company or every seed company or agrochemical company or anyone wants to have a proper things. It depends upon the yield or when it comes to agrochemical industries. So the effect should be more like when any pest and diseases comes, he sprays that chemical. There should be a curable because the farmer trusts only when the disease has been cured early on the chemicals. That's how it is. So if, if anyone wants to know about that, so the timely irrigation is very important here. And one, timely irrigation. Second, to reduce the wastage of water. So sometimes what happens, farmer, uh, as farmer will be doing all the package of practices, but in some cases what happens due to heavy rainfall or in some cases, the farmer will do the irrigation over and above the limited uh, limited so in that case to avoid these irrigations or a wastage of water in that case the farmer will get notified that here there is a more water or farmer will be knowing that so how much quantity he need to do the irrigation to that plot because it directly impacts on the yield so how it impacts so if the farmer does the more irrigation there might be a uh, loss of the crop due to more irrigation the there might be a seed rot on or a plant rot on in that case so due to more irrigation so it directly impacts on the yield also that's why the irrigation advisories will be used and weather advisories so as i mentioned earlier in cropping connect in smart uh, in cropping grow everywhere the irrigation advisories or irrigate uh, weather advisories or weather models will be available where farmer can go through those next seven days of what temperature it is, what is a precipitation, what is a humidity for next seven days in his plot. And some of the weather advisories can be triggered to the farmers via SMSs also here. So it depends upon the use case wise, how the weather advisories will be sent. In some use cases, we will give in the application uh, like uh, there are a few farmers in the rural villages they don't have android phones we want to advise them some of the companies or some of the seed based companies or fertilizer based companies want to advise them do the proper uh, irrigation what is the weather how much it will be so when he need to spray based on the weather all these advisories he want to send in that case they can choose the sms module where wherever the farmer don't have android mobiles from the platform, they can send the SMS to the farmers and where farmer can follow all these practices. So these are the different level of intelligence we are having on a cropping platform. So whenever you get a time, you can go through this platform. You will get a complete overview of what cropping is doing, how we are supporting to the farmers, how we are supporting to the different industries and what all use cases we are resolving, everything will be available on this uh, cropping website. So here you can see what all action items, as, as I earlier mentioned, what is the land cover, what is a crop deduction, crop health, water stress, crop yield, all these insights. There are uh, models which are built and that will provide you proper insights to every crop and varieties in the system. So we have some use cases around it when it comes to uh, intelligence. So some of the use cases you can see here. So as I mentioned, uh, T value chain, right? They want to understand what is the TSM levels, how much it might affect, what might be the yield, what is the best quality of the yield, when I can plug the crop, when I can plug the T, all these details can be provided through this. 
So every customer has their different use cases based on that. The cropping is helping them to get a higher value of the crop, higher profits, everything from these platforms. Just to have a overview look of the industries, like in which industries we are catering, when it comes to industry level, how it helps. So when it comes to farming industries, they have a complete record keeping system. The cropping connect is a complete record keeping system where they can keep all the data points. They can store it. They can take a output of reports. They can do some analysis based on that. Even cropping will provide us some customizable dashboards, which helps to get a more value from this platform. So every, every industry use cases, we have a, use cases which are defined below you can go through them how benefit what are the benefits we have provided by this platform for all these industries so all these data points will be <clears throat> all are there what are the all the use cases all the use cases are mentioned here you can go through these and even you can download the case studies with the help of like you have some uh, business email ids you can download those via business email ids you will get a complete insights how this use case has been resolved, what are the benefits they got, what all things we have deployed to provide these use cases. Same way, uh, all like seed-based industries. So to seed-based industries, what we are doing. So here you can see demand forecast, as I mentioned, harvest forecast. Every seed industry want to know what is my uh, what is my expected outcome from whatever the seeds I have given, and he need to plan for the sales for a supply chain and value chain. He want to plan for that. So to plan that, he need to know the expected outcome from the total contracted farmers. So similarly, what are how how cropping is solving their problems, and what are the use cases? You can go through these all use cases and benefits. Everything is available on the platform. So same way, uh, when it comes to uh, development agencies, so you can see the development, many of the development agencies, we have resolved many use cases. So like development agency majorly want to know how many farmers are there. Uh, like they want to know the complete farmer details, what crops they are growing, what value we are giving to the farmer that's very important for the development agencies so here many development agencies uh, are helping the farmers to get a more value from this platform also so then as i mentioned agri lending and insurance companies so for these insurance companies they need a agri worthiness report nothing but they want to know what all details the farmer has like in the sense like what he has grown in a last year or last two years how much harvest he got how much profit he made what is a current crop what is a expected yield and how much profit he might get what is the score of him so all these details will be available at a, uh, at a report and based on that only the uh, banking or a lending industry they will gauge the farmer on that and they will provide a loan based on that. So they don't want to take any risks here because in some cases there might be adverse climatic condition. No one can do anything. Apart from that, they, they want to know how much profit he had made last year, how much expected outcome it was in current year, how much he, he's going to make. Based on that only, the farmer will get a loan. So all these segments are covered here. You can go through it completely and you can have a complete overview on this. Then you, you can go through some case studies. So every, every case, every, everything has, everything has here. So you can go through the case studies. You will get a more cases here. Like how many, like till now, what cropping has resolved? how much they have helped to the farmers, seed-based B2B businesses and everywhere. So you can get a case studies, you can go through them, you can get a insights from that. 
and if you want to go through like if you want to know blogs or if there are any webinars you want to attend because nowadays webinars are trending so you want to have a insights in a webinars you can participate in a webinar and you can take a value from that because every number when it once the covid started the webinars are a trending one so it's uh, there will be online webinars where you can take a look on it you, you will get a more insights what companies are doing and everything so all these details will be available on the cropping website you can go through this website and you can have a more insights over this so uh, that's all from my end any any questions over here i hope i did not take too much of time of yours chat window now question some questions are there in chat window can you check it sure sure Yeah, Dr. Irmat sir, like uh, as you mentioned, some of the uh, climatic conditions like heavy rainfall and high temperature, etc. natural effects are uncontrolled. Yeah, there, there might be uncontrolled situations. So uh, to avoid those uncontrolled situations only, we are providing a weather data into their mobile applications or we are informing a farmers within, uh, within a seven days before only. Next seven days, this is the weather conditions. You need to be aware. You need to take care whatever the practice is required. In, in some cases, what happens, uh, farmer want to know like next seven days, uh, there might be high rainfall chances. In that case, uh, within within uh, within those seven days or before seven days, there will be intimation to farmer that next seven days, there might be a high chance of rainfall. Kindly follow some uh, practices. Like if he, if he has done some, he need to do some plowing activities, he can take it up before sowing or he want to do some burns to avoid the water lock condition. He want to do some drainage conditions. <coughs> so those can be followed up before itself. Before seven days itself, those advisories will be going to those farmers. They can follow those practices. Even when it comes to temperature, we can't do anything there. So the farmer, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, there might be some vegetable crop, uh, crops where it needs shades. If a high temperature is there, there, there might be a crop damages, right? So in that case, uh, the farmer can do some artificial uh, shadings to that uh, crop and he can protect his crop. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, one more question is there from Dr. Chandra. Is there another one? Both you answered? Yeah, both, uh, almost both are same. Now, oh, why oh. farmers are lost interest in agriculture in India? <laughs> So it's a very wide question, sir. like why they lost our interest. So it, there has many impacts here. One, like many of the farmers nowadays, they, they want to have more profit. But here climate is not supporting a farmer. In some cases, what happens, let me take an example of last year only. There is a heavy rainfall last year. Many, 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 many of the farmers lost their crop. So the farmer loses in interest because he's not getting whatever he is expecting. Just to give an example, so I'm expecting uh, tomorrow I want to get uh, some knowledge, insights or some something out of any session. If you won't get output from the session, you will say why I have attended it. So same way, farmer is not getting his outputs based on his requirements and uh, climatic conditions also very hard, tough nowadays where the farmers are getting more losses towards that also. That's why farmers are losing their interest in agriculture. And in some cases, what uh, nowadays, uh, farm, just to give a lay, layman example, farmers are not promoting agriculture to their sons or their next generation people. Because already farmers are getting hit by these climatic conditions or by some other industries where they are not getting a higher profits. As market are very, the market prices are very inflation. So some days if the uh, crop product, uh, tomato production is very high, the price of the tomato will come down and the farmers goes to market to sell that, he will get a lower price. 
there he will get disappointed and he will say why i have grown this crop so similar way there are many impacts why the farmer is losing in uh, interest on the agriculture there are th there will not be a single one so that's why many of the aiml or many of the companies nowadays they are trying to bring a digital tools where the farmer can know farmer should know next seven days what it's going to happen how preventive measures he can take it up on that to do not lose the crops yeah any other question from the participant i think i nagu question i think no other question i think i know how busy you are and you accepted an invitation and given the war you of cropping thank you so much uh, nagabhushan now i'll request jennifer to give the formal vote of thanks uh, then we'll go to the uh, test mcq test so this is navin yes yes sir uh, i had one question for sir like i'm looking for potential land to buy so can i use a website to see where i can buy the land so here uh, this is not a platform where you can buy a land it's a no, different sir, no, platform sir. i'm buying a land for myself uh, on a different way what i'm asking is think like i want to see a land at certain place so then can i use this website to see what is the potential of the land no, this is not that website sir this okay. is a website where you can get a insights okay. not a potentiality of the land the potentiality of the land depends upon like their uh, their previous crops and everything so okay. here does not help that so it's basically this application is for b2b businesses and to the okay. farmers to have a proper solutioning on the crops what advisories they want to follow what package of practices they need to follow it's okay, related sir. to crop not related yeah. to us no sir because i'm buying for farming itself so that is why i asked Yeah, I think farming purpose you can find what the no uh, yield or what are the crops we can grow, what is the potential, yeah. that, what are the level, yes. uh, water facility, ground, all these things I can they can predict. Yeah. Okay. So here, uh, like uh, not not the not this application I can say you can you can go through. There are some other digital tools where you, uh, it will help you to get a complete understanding on, like if you go to uh, some government agencies. geographical okay. government agencies where they will help you to understand from past years how much what are the crop they have grown what is the okay. how much yield they got currently based on the soil condition if you if you test the soil you will come to know what are the uh, crop, uh, soil in, uh, ingredients are available in that There might be a micronutrients macronutrients it depends upon the soil right so if you want to buy a land the major yeah. quality of the soil should be that's a very important for soil okay. quality is very important so first okay. uh, you know you need to know on that and you need to have a uh, some discussion with the other partners also okay sure sir and thank you sir see now which how is it different from that chat show we had in our previous presentation they are also using the remote sensing satellite image to predict the yield and other thing even they are giving to banks the data to give the loans similar to civil they are using that you know some kind of metrics uh, yes how yes. is it different from cropping and the chat show so how how its difference is uh, uh, the uh, like they are both the same they are giving output for the same but cropping is a very like it's having a data from past 10 years so here the model training is very important sir data is very important so accurate data points accurate model training so machine learning and ai are the it's a, a basic one model which learns what data we provide it will learn from that and it will give the output however we are learning from someone and we are giving out same way machine machine need to learn that machine in the sense there are some modules those module should learn it a learning a model learning is a very important phase here whatever the proper data the data should be very clean clear if there are any miscellaneous data in it the output will output will vary sir that's how the cropping will quote that we have a accuracy of 70 to 75% in all the aml models because we we have trained the models in a such a way that it gives the proper output when you compare when you get a data in a web uh, web platform if you go and compare in a field 
it will be the exact exact in the sense at least 70 to 80 percent of that will be exact whatever we are showing in our web platform just to give an example here on a one plot as i mentioned there is a one acre of plot in middle of the plot the vegetation is very low so when a supervisor goes to web, web platform if we see that plot and the ndvi or the nitrogen uptake it shows a lesser value there it will show very low value because the crop uh, crop growth has been stunted there so even when he when a supervisor goes to the plot if he observes in that plot at the center of the plot only the crop growth will be very less so these all uh, trialings or these all experiments has been already done and we have a very much uh, a good feedback from some of our customers stating that whatever we are seeing in the dashboard exactly it's there in a feed okay very good that could is the data you have more experience and more data been compared to competitors okay. yes sir yeah thank you uh, jennifer are you there Hi. yeah yes sir mm -hmm. so good evening everyone I feel extremely honored to give this vote of thanks on behalf of everyone to our respected speaker of the session, Mr. Nagabushan Patel, sir, for sharing his insights about Cropin, Cropin and its platforms, how Cropin is helpful in digitalizing agriculture, how it is beneficial to farmers, and why it is important. The session was very informative and insightful, sir. I wholeheartedly thank you for sparing your time, sparing your busy, sparing your time from your busy schedule and handling the session and making it a grand success. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank all the coordinators of Indian Institute of Plantation Management for organizing and coordinating this event. I would also like to thank all the participants for your active participation and encouragement, which was the key for session success. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nagabushan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, now we have MCQ test. You can leave. I'll talk to you some other time. Uh, uh, so we have sure, one more sure. session. MCQ test is there. We'll continue with the same way. Uh? Sure. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for hearing patience. Yeah. Thank you, Nagabushan. Thank you for your time. So now what we'll do is we'll go to the MCQ test. Before going to the MCQ test, I, I want to spend some time on the schedule. I'll share my screen. One minute. So this is the first week schedule on. We have completed uh, uh, six days. Uh, almost there was a one uh, sixth day schedule. We have shuffled with the fifth day schedule. Now we are going to conduct the MCQ test. The MCQ test based on 25 question, uh, a multiple choice question. Uh, so the team will share the link in the uh, chat window. If possible, they will share it in the WhatsApp group also. So there are 43 people have registered. But actually, participation are uh, 20 to 25 only. Let's see, because you know, um, uh, for next week uh, session is offline, you have to come to IAPM. Okay, please understand. Uh, this is the two week program. For getting a certification, uh, you need uh, some attendance percentage. At least you should have minimum um, 80 percentage attendance, including offline and uh, online. So we had a team. We I created Excel sheet and shared the team. But uh, if you look at this, how many people really coming, we don't know. Uh, but what we'll do is uh, please come on Monday. Monday, you come to IAPM. Uh, we'll have small inauguration and we'll start the physical session. So that time, maybe we'll uh, form the team. Okay, I don't know that how many people are there in really active in each team. So we one more time, we'll form the team and share all the details. Okay, for particularly uh, the articles, uh, what are the teaching practices, everything we'll discuss on Monday. So try to attend on Monday physical session. Okay. So while coming to the Monday physical session, uh, you, uh, the first two days will be in Python. Uh, you have to bring your laptop. If you don't have laptop, at least you can sit with other people. So we'll give the data set and uh, other uh, login details. So we'll use the descriptive analytics, predictive analytics in Python first two days. Third day will be the teaching practices. Okay, there will be external faculty will be there. And fourth day will be the industrial visit. We are going to copy board on incubation center. And fifth day, mostly focusing on uh, uh, presentation. One more MCQ test will be there uh, based on the physical uh, uh, session. So today MCQ is based on the offline session. One more MCQ will be there for uh, based on the physical session. We see report and um, other uh, no, uh, reflection journal uh, uh, report writing, feedback and other things will be there. So um, uh, uh, if you look at this, you, you can uh, no, uh, skip uh, at least three session maximum. So minimum requirement is 80% uh, attendance, including both online and uh, offline. Okay. 
to try to come on Monday uh, to the campus at uh, 9 o'clock, 9.30 will arrive, 9.30 will start. We'll take one group photo also. So try to be there on campus on Monday, at least for Monday, we'll see. So we'll discuss the other formalities, what are the other uh, you know, uh, examination pattern, other thing we'll discuss on Monday, okay? So uh, with this, if you have any doubt, any clarification, uh, there are our student coordinator will be there. You can contact or you can directly contact us uh, myself or Venugo also, we'll clarify, okay? So with this, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, share the uh, offline session MCQ test uh, in the chat window. So try to complete uh, within half an hour. Okay, now already time is 9.20, whatever possible be before 10 o'clock, try to complete. Okay, uh, um, the, uh, coordinator, can you share the link in the chat window? That uh, Google form yes, link? Sir. Okay, okay. If possible, you can share it in that uh, WhatsApp uh, group also. Before 10 o'clock, uh, try to complete, okay? Okay, sir. When the Google form uh, keep, we can get all the detail. Uh, what time they are uh, answering question, we can get all the detail. So if you look at the WhatsApp, there are 40 people are there. Initially, they have restricted only 50 people. I, I uh, accepted only 43 people. So in the 43 people, some of the people are not uh, no, active. We'll try to see, and Monday we'll see, and accordingly we'll decide. Is, is there any clarification, anything? Can you share the link? Jennifer, are you sharing? You chat, yes, uh, sir. chat window also, please share it in chat window. In that, okay. Okay. Hey, Subo. Subo. So we are with, uh, to, with this, we are completing to, uh, offline session. So Monday onwards, we are going with the uh, no, uh, online session. So offline session, we are starting from Monday to Friday. So lunch will be arranged in IAPM. Lunch and uh, morning uh, coffee, uh, this snacks and afternoon also will arrange. So travel, you have to take it. Travel and... Uh, Jennifer, are you sharing the link? Yeah. Please check the link and you can complete before uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Jennifer, what you are sharing a uh, Zoom link or uh, Google form? Sir, we, see, we have received yeah, sorry, a link on WhatsApp. Sir. Mm -hmm. I think WhatsApp they shared, sir. I think. Yeah, let us share here also. Okay, okay. You have to share the Google form link here. We have to share that you know, recorded video. If you are facing any difficulty, shall I share the link? Huh? Yeah, I think she shared. So this is the test, you know, I'm going to answer. I yeah, will wait for another uh, three, three to two minutes, then I'll close the window, but you try to complete before uh, 10 o'clock.
హలో సార్ హలో సార్ సార్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ నెట్వర్క్ నౌ షెల్ ఐ సెండ్ ఆన్సర్ సియర్ ఓన్లీ సార్ వాట్ ఐ జస్ట్ బి సబ్మిట్ సార్ ఓన్లీ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ Google form itself you can submit okay. there you click the button there is submit button will be there you will submit okay sir okay if you have network issue you can Thank go you, out and you can submit no issue sir okay sir i think we'll end the meeting now uh, you can uh, submit your mcq test and uh, we'll contact you for regarding uh, the offline session physical session on monday when coming on monday please bring laptop okay first two day will be python uh, using descriptive and predictive analytics third day will be teaching practice fourth day you don't need laptop that will be industrial visit fifth day maybe you need laptop for presentation and other things okay so try to come uh, monday is very important compulsory my ai city official also will come uh, so for certification you need to attend both okay but you can skip some session uh, up to and it until you are getting 80% attendance okay we have to upload everything online so try to come on monday okay it's very important uh, sir today's procession i have not filled that google form sir you shared in whatsapp sir you check it all shared but i uh, that it is showing immediately second session no? first session yes you shared uh, hmm. but uh, i have not filled sir okay one more I time fill it that no issue one same link only fill it no problem mention that you know no 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 first session first session sir link now is it is showing only, second sir. session no no link is no, same only sir you can submit one more time okay. and type the resource person name and other uh, okay sir same link only we are using for all the session okay okay sir thank you sir uh, thank you uh, see you on on monday okay i'll in the meeting now uh, you complete the mcq test before 10 o'clock uh, we we'll, can in the google sheet itself we can see what time you are submitting the assignment okay that uh, mcq test so accordingly we will evaluate and give the mark this is for 10 percentage weightage one more mcq will be there after completion of uh, uh, physical session maybe next friday it will be there fine uh, thank you if you any question you can contact us okay so we'll clarify we'll see you on monday so now we'll in the meeting you try to complete the mcq test is it okay Okay. I'll end the meeting now. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.